Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, we're going to talk to a human behavior genius, and she's going to help us look inside the mind of other people. That's just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I have to confess, I'm nervous. I spent 25 years in front of a television camera, but I'm sitting next to a better broadcaster than, than me. And and I had the feeling that I could ask a question, I could leave, go to the bathroom for about 15 come minutes, back. and you would be fine. Yeah. And Jeff joins us again. Yeah. Amelia yeah. Antonetti, she is a CEO, strategist, and human ha behavior genius. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. I've never seen the words human behavior genius together. Where yeah. does that come from? Well, I, you know... I, People don't understand that everything derives from people. Everything, it doesn't matter what you want to do in life. Better relationship, better investments, better team, better company is contingent on people. However, we spend no time understanding human behavior. So we take all these classes for, we take financial classes and science classes and math classes. You know, we take classes on leadership and team building, but we spend no time understanding human behavior, except human behavior dictates our success in anything. And so I studied human behavior. That's how I grew my company. And then I specialize in identifying people's genius, right? Wow. And so as a behaviorist, what I'm tapping into is the part of your identity that makes you a genius. And she and she is a genius, and she makes an impact. You're here for Success North Dallas. Yeah. I had the uh, the treat of hearing you this morning. You're you're still you got so much energy, but you got up at four this morning and you arrived yeah. late. And I got to brag about you because you're so compelling that uh, Lauren, who is our director of first impressions, is being a fangirl right now. <laughs> she's so impressed with you. She's there. She's listening to it now. She's blushing. <laughs> People were hanging on tight. I took the stage. And I was like, okay, coming in hot. Now, you know, hold on. Now yeah. your speaking style is very. Very bold. Yeah. I mean, you kind of get in people's face. Yeah. Yeah. Because the goal of my speaking is to get you to think, right? What gets confusing is that people think I'm trying to get you to agree with me. No, absolutely not. My goal is for you to start thinking because if you're thinking, you have opened up the door of awareness and then it leads you to, are you willing to take a look at the other side? And then what is the action? But until a leader can stop to think, nothing's going to change. And so the minute I can be able to, and I basically can tell people I can unlock a problem and move you to a solution in less than 11 minutes. Wow. Right? That's how fast human behavior works. I had to open with, I'm not a therapist. <laughs> so if you think you're going to get a warm hug or a lay down on the couch, wrong girl, wrong girl. You're going to get immediate, here's immediately what's going on. This is why it's going on, where it's rooted, and what you can do differently if you so choose. Okay, so I want you to uh, do do a uh, breakdown on yourself because okay. you're so bold. <laughs> does that come from mom or dad, or where does that where does that fierce uh, you know in your face? Yeah, well, my fierceness is only in my areas of genius. Okay, right. So I'm in my er like I'm I'm passionate about people. I love people. I love helping people excel. I love creating communities that people feel connected and they're bonded. So that's my area of genius. So in this realm, I appear very confident because I'm in my area of genius. Now, if you wanted to talk right now about rotating t cars uh, or tires or oil or anything like that, I'd be like, uh, uh, right? So I'm confident only in the areas where I have that alignment. But that's how everybody performs. And so in this arena, that's, but I'm really an introvert. I'm an introvert. I wouldn't leave my home. I would wow. not leave my house if I didn't have to. But I'm compelled because I believe that in this space and time, we have a crisis and we have a people crisis. And the way that people are trying to solve this problem is based on antiquated tools. And I'm like, um, hey, let's consider it didn't work last time or the time before. So now we're gonna try to use the same antiquated tools to fix this problem that's even bigger. Yeah, I say no. 
Yeah. She's such a compelling speaker. I want to show her sizzle reel. <laughs> Amelia Antonetti is one of the most sought after human behavior and conflict resolution experts in the world. She has been awarded fastest under 40, the Wells Fargo Award of Excellence, Kaufman Foundation Entrepreneur Award, Inc's 500, 500 fastest growing private companies award seven times in her career. Please welcome CEO and founder of Genius Key, Amelia Antonetti. Wow, you have done, <laughs> you've done so many things. I mean, when you look at your own sizzle reel, do you say, I did all that? I did oh, that? Oh, I look, I'm mortified. Like, I really? look at it going, oh, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> right, um, you know, because I'm always jumping in the flame, right? Because if, as, as I think most entrepreneurs and leaders, like when you see something is causing unintended pain, you have a responsibility to do something. I can't sit by and watch something happen that I know at the core isn't right. Yes. Right? And I'm okay to create that resistance energy and you to say, Amelia, I don't agree or whatever, because now we're in communication and together we're gonna solve the problem. Sure. So I'm never trying to tell people I'm right and you're wrong. I don't believe in right and wrong. I don't believe in right or wrong or good or bad. Your right is not my right. But together, we're going to come to a solution. And I think we have a people crisis right now. People crisis. And I'm like, listen, we've got to go shoulder to shoulder. We have to lean into difficult conversations to find what the solution is and then be able to test right with our young people. Is it working for you? Yes. Is it working for you? It doesn't matter if it's working for me. I'm older than dirt. Who cares about me? I care about you. Does it working for you? And then get closer and closer because that's the future leaders. We're reliant on them to solve big world problems, but we're giving them no tools, no life tools. Like literally we just pushed our course into colleges. Colleges was like, no, I don't really think they need life skills. Excuse me? Have you listened to the news at all? I don't know. Pick any stat. What do you mean you don't think they need life skills? Of course they need life skills. We're throwing them out there to the wolves and they're not prepared. And we have a responsibility to do something. So they're like, because everything I do is based in science, right? It should be a science class. Be human behavior should be in science. No, I'm an elective. And I'm like, okay, we sold out like within the hour. Within the hour. People wow. are like, oh, I don't know, gym or life skills. Oh, I don't know, life skills. Wow. Right? It's crazy because we have all these antiquated yuck at the top who are married to their position. And I'm just like, well, have you considered maybe you're wrong? Yes. And we've got this epidemic of quiet quitting and the great resignation. So uh, Suicide let's... rate that's off the hook. Yes. Right? All kinds of dis... We're disengaged as a, as a society. As a, we're disengaged. So how can that be healthy when humans were designed to go together? By design, we were made to together. All the science in the world says that a human on their own will die. Why do you think we put people in isolation in, in prison, right? Isolation, the worst thing that you can do for a human is isolate them. And yet we're isolating humans every single day. We're tearing the fundamental bonds of humanity apart. And then we're going, oh, I wonder why we have a problem. Uh, <laughs> we're actually self-inducing this problem. Okay, talk about your book and your course. So I, I didn't want to write a book, okay? I did not want to write a book, but as I keep seeing like this perpetual problem getting worse and worse and worse, I said to myself, okay, Amelia. So I've, you know, again, I've had a bunch of companies, I've had 53,000 employees. And I was like, what was the moment for me that I realized as a leader, maybe I was doing something wrong. Like maybe. And I read a book called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. And I cried. Like I literally was in a fetal position. And I was like, wow, maybe my job here is to serve. Maybe my job here is to give. Maybe my job here is not to be so married to my position and what I think. Maybe my job is to understand what you think. And my whole world shifted. And I'm such a big component and I'm, I'm so grateful to this man. Um, he wrote the foreword to the book, you know, along with a whole Dave Meltzer, like a whole other people who leaned in and said, yes, the way forward is to spin and address the biggest shift in our lifetime. So what just happened was up until COVID, companies had the power. You had to go find a job, right? You had to go to find a job and you wanted to believe in that job and you hoped to God that maybe they would believe in you, but you had to go find a job. 
during the universal reset, people had an opportunity to stop and realize, mm, I don't have to go find a job. There's a lot of ways that I can support my lifestyle that isn't conditional on a job and a job description. Companies are still married to you need me. Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't. So if you need us, the people, which we all learned, right? People are the secret sauce. People are the greatest ingredient, but we don't treat people like the asset that they are then that means that the company has to come down to the entry level position to understand that person. There's no system that does that. So it's like what I'm gonna do and just leave as my life work is I'm going to create a people operating system that amplifies every tactical solution. Because if you have tactics, but you under, don't understand the people system underneath that, you're going to do unintended harm. And that is what we've done inside of our companies. Literally the onboarding process is, I'm so glad you were hired, I hope you figured this out. And they walk around going, well, my direct report doesn't have any time for me, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do, I don't have any, I don't even know what my job is, I have, I have no nothing. So we bring somebody into this organization, they're really excited about their first day and they're like, well, that was a fail, and so is the next week, and so is the next week, and so is the next 90 days. 90 days, every white paper shows that, people are, unbelievably disappointed. And what are they doing? They're looking for their next job because they're looking somewhere that they can belong for what is an internal need for them. They have an internal need to go, I wanna be significant. I wanna do something that's meaningful. I wanna be able to be part of a team that I can do great things. And we just go, eh, eh, roam around the building and hope you figure it out. It's wrong, it's wrong. And tell us about the course. What will people experience when they take your course? So the course is the opposite of what we've learned as leaders and CEOs, right? And those people um, who are basically leading the pack, right? So if you're responsible for anybody, so if you're, if you're a parent responsible for people, any way you're responsible for your half, it creates a plan that says, okay, what are my value drivers? And I don't mean core values, right? I'm talking about value drivers. Any business owner understands that there are value drivers that drive the valuation of a company, right? Anything else is for your ego. If you're not doing what drives value in a company, you're entertaining yourself because it doesn't mean anything in a line item, right? That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but it doesn't drive value. And anybody who's ever had an investor or a stockholder or a board, all they care about is what drives value. So I said, well, if people are our greatest asset and everything just changed, shouldn't people learn what drives value for them? What are those five areas of focus? What is rooted in their identity? And in their identity, what is yours really? And what is somebody else's? And walk people to realize going, wow, I thought this was part of my identity. Actually, this is my mom's, this is my dad's, this is my brother, this is an experience that I, a traumatic experience. So they start working, we, we call it you know, a life plan that allows them to say, these are the areas that are most important to me. Inside those areas, this is what drives values. And this becomes my should and should nots. Mm. My minimal standard for you to have a relationship with me, here's my minimum standard. And now you have a life board, a life project, a workbook that everybody in the company has access to. So now, because we have people who are entry level, have been put into management roles and they know nothing about management. And then we took entry level managers and we made the middle manager and they know even less. And so we've got people trying to lead people, but there's no tools. And so in our genius vault is every people problem and the game and the solution. So you don't have to be a great manager. You can go, oh, listen, I need to kind of have a more interesting meeting. Oh, meeting? Here's the game. Hey, I've got two people on the team who don't get to get along. Oh, vault, conflict. So all of the human behavior, awareness, and then chosen modification. So you go like, oh, I wasn't aware that I just did that. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And then it goes, here's the modification tool. And so we've been able to create the entire process from onboarding, true development, conflict resolution, retention, and value in one course. Absolutely. This is this is your legacy. I can tell. I love it, right? Because people feel better. <laughs> yes. People like we every time we do my fate I'm going to cry. My favorite thing is after we've gone in and worked with either a management team or a leadership team or a company. The number 91% of the time when people come back and they're like, "Oh my god, I feel like I belong here." My heart sinks. My heart sinks. Businesses are having the opportunity to have people belong. Mm. Belong here. I belong here. Isn't that what everybody's looking for? 
Wow. And what everybody's looking for. Right. And that's it. So I, 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 we do relationship stuff, and now people feel like they belong to their partner. They understand it. Kids feel like they belong to their family. Companies, now they've got teams who belong to the team. Communities, they, they come together in literally 11 minutes. In 11 minutes, they realize, oh, my gosh, you get me. Oh, my gosh, you see me. Wow. I've got chills, and I, and I, and I, I don't know. If I'm going to cry. And the, and yes, I'm going to cry. I'm she's cry. tearing up, and I love that passion. We only have a couple minutes okay. left. Final thoughts, and, and your viewers right there, what do you want to say to the people watching? It matters. Everything matters. What you think, even though you don't speak it, what you think affects everything. What you say affects everything. What you do affects everything. People are the ingredient to every single thing that you want to do. No matter what you want to do, people are the ingredient. And from where you are to where you want to be, 100%, it's a behavior. It is not time. It is not money. It is not resources. It's not tactical, right? Nothing ever got fixed tactically. It is a behavior that is standing in the way between where you are and where you want to go. And once you can shift that mind and realize that everything that you want is right within, right within your internal compass, everything about people changes. Wow. I'm so blessed to have you on the show. I'm You're so amazing. To be here. I'm okay, so we're going to end with your website, which is designinggenius.com. Okay. Uh, Amelia, thanks for coming on the show. It's like you're a genius. <laughs> That's it for now. We'll see you next time.